Boys, something big has happened just here. Um, Mike Yabara. This is the president of Blizzard Entertainment, by the way. I want to thank everyone who has impacted today for their meaningful contributions to their teams, to Blizzard and to players' lives. It's an incredibly hard day, and my energy and support will be focused on all those amazing individuals impacted. This is in no way a reflection on your amazing work. If there's anything I can help with, connections, recommendations, etc., DM me. To the Blizzard community, I also want to let you all know today is my last day at Blizzard, leading Blizzard through an incredible, incredible time and being part of the team, shaping it for the future ahead, was an absolute honor. Having already spent 20 plus years at Microsoft and with the acquisition of Activision Blizzard behind us, it's time for me to once again become Blizzard's biggest fan from the outside. To the incredible teams at Blizzard, thank you. Words can't express how I feel about all of you. You are amazing. Continue to do incredible things and always keep Blizzard blue and the players at the forefront of every decision. To all of those impacted today, I'm always available to you and understand how challenging today's news is. My heart is with each of you. What news? What the fuck happened? Hold up. <clears throat> Microsoft lays off 1,900 Activision Blizzard and Xbox employees. Um, Microsoft is laying off 1,900 employees at Activision Blizzard and Xbox this week, while Microsoft is primarily laying off roles at Activision Blizzard. Some X Xbox and ZeniMax employees will also be impacted by the cuts. The cuts work out to roughly 8% of the overall Microsoft gaming division that stands at around 22,000 employees in total. The Verge obtained an internal memo from Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer that confirms the labs. It's been a little over three months since the Activision Blizzard and King teams joined Microsoft. As we move forward in 2024, the leadership of Microsoft Gaming and Activision Blizzard is committed to aligning on a strategy and an execution plan with a sustainable cost structure that will support the whole of, of our growing business. Together, we've set priorities, identified areas of overlap, and ensured that we're all aligned on the best opportunities for growth. As part of this process, we have made the painful decision to reduce the size of our gaming workforce by approximately 1,900 roles out of the 22,000 people on our team. The gaming leadership team and I are committed to navigating this process as thoughtfully as possible to avoid looking ahead. We'll continue to invest in areas that will grow our business and support our strategy for bringing. Alongside the layoffs, Blizzard President Mike Ibarra has decided to leave the company. Microsoft plans to name a new Blizzard President next week. Alan Adam, Blizzard's Chief Design Officer, is also leaving the company. As one of Blizzard's co-founders, Alan has had a broad impact. It's fucking great that Adam, uh, Adam, Alan Adam is finally leaving because he's the guy that ran the whole uh, mobile division at Blizzard. So I actually don't mind him being gone. <clears throat> <clears throat> so technically speaking, I'm not going to go through this whole article, but technically speaking, this was to be expected. The problem is that Blizzard and Activision for a very long time was a company on its own, right? So it had a bunch of roles that a company needs in order to make video games, but isn't necessarily actively involved in the design of video games. Now that they're part of Microsoft, there's a shit ton of jobs that, while they don't really need Activision and Blizzard to be able to do those jobs, right? So... I can see why Microsoft was going to let people go. It just makes sense that Microsoft was going to do this. I also think, again, this is not the only layoffs that's going to happen. I think there's going to be more layoffs. I don't know if they'll let Ian Azicostas go. The, mostly with layoffs like this, the rule is first in, uh, last in, first out. So it will be anyone that, that recently joined or joined in the, in the most recent years that they'll let go, depending on, of course, what they're trying to do. I don't imagine that Ian will be let go, unless, of course, they're looking at Ian's track record and going, dude, you clearly don't know what the fuck you're doing. So we're going to let you go, and we're going to get someone else in that knows what the hell they're doing, right? It, it doesn't, like, I doubt it will be Ian. That being said, I think there's going to be more of this. I, I believe that we'll probably see over the next three to four years, every six to eight months, more and more people will be let go. 22,000 people is a ridiculous number of developers. And if I am correct, then most of these layoffs, layoffs are coming because most of these companies expect uh, an insane economic drop. 22,000 people is just too much. Like, it, it'll... It, it, It'll bankrupt you as soon as the economy crashes. So it's a good chance that we'll see more of these layoffs. Obviously, the problem is 
you can't just lay off half of your employees. You can't go, well, we're going to go down to 11,000. Because the, the turmoil that that would cause would basically bring the company to a standstill. So basically, the way that companies approach layoffs is, we'll do 1,900 now, then we'll see once the dust settles what is required and what isn't, and then we'll do maybe another round of layoffs of, say, 1,500 to 2,000 people. We'll wait for the dust to settle, see what is redundant, what isn't, and then keep letting people go as you figure out better and better systems to do the work with fewer and fewer people. And then AI comes around and you go, well, we're, get, we're letting everyone go. World of Warcraft is being made by one dude. <laughs> the rest is AI. <laughs> and at that point, people are so used to layoffs. They're just like, well, fuck it. What are you going to do? I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, um, it's sad. I'm sorry for all of the Blizzard developers that will be impacted by this. Someone just said in chat there that the Blizzard developers still don't even know. Which actually, I think, shows, in all honesty, and I hate to say this, but it kind of shows just how business first Blizzard Activision and Microsoft became. If you, look, if you compare this to what happened at Riot, Riot, as soon as they announced that they're doing the layoffs, they immediately emailed all of their employees to first and foremost let them know whether or not their department was going to be laid off or was going to be infected affected by this but then also to let those that are affected know as soon as possible you are being laid off now you could say well you shouldn't do that in an email but my question to you would be would you rather find out immediately or would you rather sit there for five days not knowing if you're going to be laid off waiting for your penultimate meeting with your representative to learn that, oh, by the way, you are being fired. Like, what would you prefer right away? Yeah, I want to know immediately. I don't want to sit there because now for the next five days, you don't know what the fuck's going on. You, you're you stressed. Am I being fired? Am I not being fired? Your entire life is now a little bit in question. It just sucks. I would rather find out immediately so that I can immediately start making plans. Where am I going next? What am I doing next? You know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, just let me know in an email. I don't need you to tell me face to face. Email is easier. That way I can cry on my own, right? Or whatever the fucking case may be. So I feel very, very sorry for these developers, but it is going to happen more and more. This is not the last time that we'll hear about this. In fact, this is only the beginning. That's my prediction. We can check back next year, see if I'm right or wrong. But I think this is going to happen more and more often. Most of these companies are, comp are way way overpopulated there there are way too many people working at these companies and yeah these guys clearly know that something's coming wait has the blizzard survival game been cancelled survival game has been cancelled i have heard from a few sources that it has been in development hell for years this appears to have been going nowhere however i am unfamiliar with more recent developments on it i am not surprised i believe at the time we no, no, Balia didn't block me. No, no, you can see her. Balia follows me. Um, no, no, Jason Schreier blocked me. Because I think at one point I called him a shoal. Because uh, he was writing an article about some company. And I just, I didn't agree with what he was saying. So I commented on his post. And I was like, dude, this is what the fuck are you talking about? Um... Ordinarily, I think I started saying, ordinarily, I respect you because you're one of the few uh, developers that actually do a good job. But in this case, I genuinely do not agree with you. Um, I can't remember what it was. It was some bullshit. And I think that's when he blocked me. Um, which I just take as a badge of honor, to be fair. I'm not surprised at all, if I'm honest with you guys. I think when Blizzard announced this, I still said, I wonder if this game will ever come out. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, as a company, Blizzard really struggles with innovation. It really doesn't seem like Blizzard knows how to innovate anymore. When you look at pretty much all of the games that Blizzard makes, there's consistently companies that's doing it better and that's doing more. And the other problem is survival games, uh, 
are actually notoriously difficult to make well. There is a litany of survival games out there that basically gets no fucking views, right? No one plays them. No one gives a shit. They're pretty difficult to make well. And I always thought to myself, I don't know if Blizzard actually knows how to make this. Because if you're going to make a survival game, you need to have a... Actually, let me put it to you this way. What is the reason for What is the reason for Baldur Gate Baldur's Gate 3 success? Why is Baldur's Gate 3 so successful? It's made by Larian Studios, right? made by larian studios larian studios is a studio that specializes in what c or bgs this is what larian studio does it is the only thing larian studio does which means that every developer that works at larian is an expert at making crpgs because it's the only thing they do now Contrast that to a company like Blizzard, right? So if we're looking at a company like Blizzard, what does Blizzard make? Blizzard makes WoW. They make Overwatch. They make Diablo, right? Uh, they used to make StarCraft, right? They used to make Warcraft. They make uh, what's the other fucking card game? Uh, Hearthstone, right? They make they make Hearthstone. The developers that work at Blizzard are so fractured in what they actually make, what they actually focus on, because we already know that there is quite a bit of movement between these teams every once in a while. People will move out of the WoW team and go work for another team when they get a little bit bored with doing WoW. So basically what you end up with is a bunch of jack of all trades, masters of none. Like very few of these people are actually masters at what they're doing. They 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 do it for a little while and then they jump to the, jump to something else and then jump to something else and so on and so forth. If you start to, if you look at everything that Blizzard is doing here, right? You look at WoW, you look at StarCraft, you look at Warcraft, you look at Overwatch, Diablo, Hearthstone. None of these games scream survival. Like, just because you can make WoW does not mean that you can make a survival game. Just because you can make StarCraft does not mean you can make a survival game. Warcraft, Overwatch, Diablo, Hearthstone. None of these games mean that you can make a survival game. And as we have just recently learned with the, with the incredible success of PAL World, survival games require people that actually play survival games in order to make them wow. There are small little details in PAL World that most developers completely miss. They don't even think about it. And yet these developers actually thought about these things. They they know survival games so well that they thought about this and they went, this is boring. Why do we have this in our game? For example, cutting down trees. Very important early game. The second you get the log log logging camp, never again do you have to, to punch down any trees, right? You never have to chop trees again. Why? Because it's boring. It's boring to just chop down fucking trees the whole time. So why not automate that shit and rather let the player focus on collecting pals that are more and more better at logging camp, for example. It was almost inevitable that Blizzard would eventually fail at the survival game because I don't know which developers working for Blizzard would actually know how to make a survival game. Considering survival games are some of the hardest games to make because one or two wrong moves 
and you've just made a grindy fucking mess of a game. Oh, that and a lot of the developers that actually liked pushing the, the envelope and liked making new things have left Blizzard years and years and years ago, right? Most of those developers now have their own studios or work for indie studios, so they're no longer there. The people that is currently working at Blizzard, not the majority, but definitely a sizable amount, are there because it's a paycheck and it's secure. Wait, right, you're working for a company. It's a big company. They'll take care of you. you in survival games, you are 100% talking about a game that wholly relies on gameplay. If any of the gameplay systems suck, the game will most likely suck because it doesn't have anything else to fall back on. It's not like a storytelling game where you can say, wow, the gameplay is pretty sucky, but the story is so good, it doesn't even matter. It, it, you only have the gameplay. And if anything in that gameplay lacks, the game lacks. And that's just as simple as it is. On Walker of the Universe would be cool. Dude, Blizzard made the other mistake here, in my opinion. They wanted the survival game to be its own IP. It wasn't going to be in the WoW IP. It was going to be its own thing. And I just thought to myself, dude, why the fuck would you not make the survival game in Azeroth? Like, dude, people would literally come in their pants if they knew that there was going to be a survival game in Azeroth. The idea of being able to build your own base, run around Azeroth, chopping down trees, fucking terraforming the place, building your own castles, your own Stormwind, if that is what you're up, what you're into. People would love that shit. And they decided, nah, we're going to build the survival game in our own universe. We're going to make a new universe for that. It's like, dude, why? You have this IP. Why not use this IP? It works, right?